I'm Paul, and this is Building Go with Bazel. Uh, first off, we'll talk a little bit about what Bazel is uh, and how to use it. We'll walk through a project using it. So around six months ago, uh, I was working on building some minimal Docker binaries, uh, Docker images for Go binaries. So building the Docker, building the Go binary, and then putting it into a kind of from scratch Docker container so it was nice and small to deploy. And there was multiple steps, and there was a lot of make file hacks, uh, touching files, because your targets have to be files, or tarring the Docker images. And generally, I was wondering, why is this so hard? And some of my coworkers suggested loads of stuff to look at, uh, which eventually led me to Bazel. So what is Bazel? It is the open source version of Google's internal build system, Blaze. They've rearranged some of the letters to be clever. Uh, it's very much still a work in progress. Uh, it's moving very quickly. The roadmap is packed. They have on their website, uh, there's a stable 1.0 aimed for June of next year, 2018. So let's talk a bit about what makes it different from Make and the core concepts, or what makes it different from the Go tooling either. First off is that it actually has two languages. Uh, the first language being build. Uh, so this is the declarative language, it's more general than make. It's what you write your actual build files in. Um, and unlike in make, where you put a make file right at the top of your project, build files go next to the source. So there's one in each Go package in Go. So you end up with lots of them kind of spread around, but they're quite small and tidy. Uh, if you have a conflict, you can also call them build.bazel. It's, in general, Bazel is somewhat opposite of the Go tools. The Go tools are very implicit. There's very, you put your package in this folder and it gets referenced in this way. Uh, Bazel's very explicit. It's very configuration driven. Uh, so you end up with a bit of this. Uh, interestingly, unlike in make, uh, the rules actually have a name instead of a file as the thing you type. So you, you would run this as hello, not as hello world.txt. Um, so there is a lot of boilerplate uh, with Bazel. The Go tooling for it is quite good in that it lets you generate these automatically which is nice. Uh, the second language being Skylark. So this is how you would write your extensions. Even the core language support in Bazel is written as extensions. Uh, it's similar to Python in a lot of ways. Uh, this one is basically printing, dumping everything about the rule and its attributes. The, yeah, writing extensions is pretty straightforward though. They kind of all follow this pattern. You do the actual implementation, and then you kind of state the attributes that the user can use to that. And all of this in Bazel is kind of in service of two goals, making your builds correct and fast. And by correct, they really mean repeatable, so that you can take a given set of inputs and get the same output every single time. So there's kind of two ways that you can do that. You can either lock your inputs to specific versions so you know that you're getting the exact thing you want, like a git commit, that kind of thing, or you can vendor it. Um, obviously, because we're all familiar with Go, vendoring is kind of the standard way of doing things now in Go. The advantage of that being you don't need any network to build your stuff, which is nice. So Bazel even takes it a bit further than Go, though. So in Go, we tend to vendor our dependencies, but not necessarily the compiler. Um, Bazel tends to vendor everything, even Bazel, and the compiler, and the whole thing, as much as is possible. Uh, but because they're both really in favor of vendoring, it makes it a really natural fit. It plays really well with DEP tool and pretty good with GVT and stuff like that. Um, there's also, because of, it sandboxes everything, I've actually found even with using GVT for Go, you'll be building your stuff, commit it, push it off, someone else will try and run it. Oh, it says you haven't found this package because the Go tool has actually looked into your, your main Go path where you've done a Go install previously. So the sandboxing in here can actually help you catch some of that as well. Because the things are repeatable and the actual build files are very isolated, you get really good incremental builds. Um, Go does some of this as well, uh, but it's a bit more new for uh, other languages that Bazel supports. Um, and a lot of this is based in Bazel on Merkle trees. So a quick overview of Merkle tree Basically, it's just a tree of hashes. So we have our data along the bottom with the actual data. We hash them together, and then we hash those hashes up. And this means that we get really good structural sharing. It's almost a content addressable storage system. So in 
Bazel, we hash the inputs. So data one and data two would be like our input files. And then if something changes, we know that the hashes of that will change and propagate up. So we can reuse our existing build. And because these things are so reusable and repeatable, we can actually do the really exciting thing of shared caching. Unlike make or go build, which is very much, you know, I'm working on my laptop, it's just me, I'm gonna build some software. Bizzle comes out of a multiplayer way of building software. So you can actually reuse uh, portions of the incremental builds uh, between developers, which is cool. So technically, as your team size grows, your average build time should shrink, you could expect. Uh, this is very early uh, in Bazel. They've just kind of reworked the APIs for that in 0.5.3, maybe 0.5.4. Um, but you can set up a shared cache with Nginx. It's REST-based, or there's a gRPC implementation. And further on from that, coming from C, with long build times uh, and Java, it makes a lot of sense to outsource the work. Um, this, the architecture of this is one of the bits I'm less convinced of uh, in Bazel. The entire thing is built with a server client architecture. So even when you're running it locally on your laptop, the first time it fires up a local server to talk to. Uh, unfortunately, it's Java, so it takes a few seconds. I wish it was Go. Uh, but then after that, the runs are really fast. Uh, there's not a remote uh, implementation of these yet uh, that's open sourced, uh, but the APIs were just standardized. So we'll see what happens. You can also run your tests through Bazel, which gives you some nice benefits. Uh, so if you declare your test files, it then knows what libraries it depends on. So you can rerun the tests for just the things that you changed, and it can parallelize them out for you. Um, yeah, so if you change a couple files in your project, you can just run the tests for those, not the entire suite kind of automatically. And also because it comes from a lot of different languages, it's inherently polyglot, right? So it's easy to integrate with a bunch of different languages, which is most projects nowadays, right? You probably have like Webpack and Docker and Go and other stuff going on. Um, the focus is still on C and Java, uh, but like we saw earlier, the Skylark thing is pretty extensible. So plugins are pretty easy to write. Um, the rules go one is, I'd say, reasonably supported. It's one of the better supported ones. Um, what other alternatives are there? Uh, there is a few. Uh, there's uh, notably Buck and Pants. Uh, Buck being from Facebook and Pants is a open source collaboration one. They all share the build language that we saw earlier. Uh, there's kind of different takes on a similar thing. Uh, since we started on this, uh, I was just trying to build minimal Docker images. Now there's also, you can use multi-stage Docker images. So if that's all you want, that's like a much simpler way to get started. Uh, so I wanna actually walk through a project that uses some of these. So who wants to build a startup? Uh, we should probably get some VC funding, but that's a bit 2010. So we're gonna crowdfund it. So anyone that doesn't wanna pitch in for the crowdfunding round, put your hand up. Okay, so everybody's pitching in, that's awesome. We have loads of money now. So that's our seed funding, so we should probably figure out what we actually wanna build. Uh, prepping for this talk, I had two different ideas. We can either build Twitter, uh, but you're not allowed to threaten people with nuclear weapons. Um, that sounds difficult though, so we're gonna do a different one instead. That'll be much easier. We are going to engrave, oh, is this gonna work? I need to do the uh, mirror displays, okay. We are gonna do laser engraved, grass-fed sirloin straight to your door. Maybe delivered by drone, I don't know yet. So you can choose a picture, upload, let's do a nice gopher, put on this steak, and uh, do a 14 day old, don't push the boat out. Order it, laser's firing, drone is en route to you. Please enjoy your steak. So this is a simple app, it's a React app, single page, talking to a Go backend, which is kind of handling the orders, printing stuff out and uh, all bundled up into a Docker container. So it kind of touches a lot of things you would be using in your regular project. So I want to go through how this is set up and actually built through Bazel. Okay. Everybody see that okay? Cool. So the first thing is in your Bazel project, you start with a workspace file. This goes at the root of your project. It's where you'd put your gitignore file. And that defines the rules that you're using. So 
the whole Bazel thing is done in a very plugin oriented way. Even the actual thing that loads a Git repository for you to work with is itself an extension defined in there. So first we have to load that. And then from there, we can use that to load our individual language specific rules. So for Go, we load our, give it a name and load our thing from GitHub. The nice thing about loading these from GitHub is if you don't like them or you wanna make a change, you can just fork it and point it at your own. It's like a one line change, it's really easy. Um, and then we lock that to a specific commit so that we know we're getting the same tool chain. So this installs our Go compilers for us and makes sure that we're on the right version of Go that we expect. Um, and then from there, we load up the Go rules that we just downloaded and kind of install the actual tool chain. There's a convention of you know, X underscore repositories as like the initialization thing for this. Uh, we do the same thing for Docker. Uh, I used a tag here instead of a commit because I'm lazy, but I shouldn't do. Uh, commits are generally much safer. Um, and nicely with Docker for Bazel, it actually has its own uh, Docker container builder. So you don't actually need Docker to pull, push images, build containers, build images rather. Um, you can do it all without that. It's done via, there's some Python library in the Docker rules. Uh, but we'll start with an Alpine pull to base our container into. And then we'll download the rules for Node. So the Node rules, we don't really use these as much. There's not super good support for Webpack yet. There's not a super good uh, repository for it. Um, strangely, there's a really good one for TypeScript. Uh, and there's kind of one for Node, but there's not like a Webpack one. So we're just using this to install Node version 8.3, basically, so that we can use that later. And we'll see that in a sec. So let's look at uh, how we build the Docker container to start with, and then we'll do Go, and then we'll look at the Node stuff to wrap up. So first off, uh, with our build file, so we're going from the workspace into our build file, and it's a very similar structure, it's the same kind of language. You load stuff, and that gives you rules, and then you use those rules to run, th run things. Um, let's look at, yeah, we'll do this one. So we first declare where we are located in the Go path. Um, again, it's more explicit than Go. You have to actually tell it where it is. It doesn't just assume based on your file folder. Um, and then we tell it how to run Gazelle. So Gazelle is a command line tool that comes with uh, rules Go. It generates a lot of these build files for you automatically. That's kind of the, the more basal way is you have lots of configuration, but you just generate it, so you don't need to do as much with it. And in Gazelle, Let's find that bit of code, here we go. Uh, so there's two different ways you can use it. You can either use it straight from the command line where you tell it the prefix and that your stuff is vendored or you can add it straight into your build and at that point you get a nice little command line. Uh, you can run it that way where you get all your options in. In general with Bazel, there's like two different ways to manage your dependencies. You can either put them in your build file or your workspace file and have it fetch the repository for you and manage them. And then you have to do everything through that. Or with the rules go one, you can say, I've vendored it already. I've used GVT or GoDep or something to vendor it, uh, which I'd favor in general because it plays much nicer with the Go tooling that exists already. Um, so I've used that here. So this is actually, this gazelle command has actually generated pretty much all of the, the Go building stuff that we need. Um, particularly if you have the rendering stuff, it'll go through and populate all that for you. Uh, it works pretty well, haven't hit any bugs with that. And then for the actual Docker container, uh, it's pretty straightforward. We just say, you know, here's the name of the image I wanna build, it's based on this, here's the command, and you can add files and tars. Because it's not using actual Docker, you can't run commands in your containers, you can just add files. But that means that your containers are much more deterministic than if you're going off and fetching stuff from the web in the middle of your Docker container build. Um, so in this one, we're referencing a couple other targets uh, that we'll declare. So in the root of the project is the double slash, command folder, API folder, we're gonna import the stuff from there. And then root of the project again, Jess, we're gonna import a target called build. Um, we'll look at the target syntax in a few minutes. So that's how we define and build the Docker container. In general, with Bazel, you always want to use language-specific rules if you can, instead of generals. Generals, the kind of makefile equivalent, are kind of the last case resort um, because they can introduce weird 
kind of bugs and edge cases into your build. So Bazel, or sorry, Gazelle, once it runs the generator thing, generates a file something like this. It's a little bit different from your standard Go uh, binary, particularly in that this is our main package. We still define a library. You always define a library with the sources, the actual files in it. Um, if you already have this generated, you can rerun Gazelle if you change files, and it'll just update stuff. Uh, it's pretty, pretty good at that. Um, and we also declare our dependencies in there so that it knows if one of them changes, we need to rebuild down the chain. Uh, because it's not language specific, it doesn't infer as much from the actual language. It needs a bit more pointers than you would. Um, we also then define the binary, of course, API, that depends on that library. Uh, the rules go uses this go default library thing. It's kind of, because Bazel in general supports Java and other languages where you can have multiple packages in the same folder, they just picked go default library as a, here's a package, it's a folder kind of convention. Um, one interesting thing I hit when building this was that it doesn't by default build uh, statically linked binaries for Go. Um, so you need to actually put this in uh, to do static binaries. Uh, yep, yeah. and we can declare a test. Gazelle's actually already detected that for me. I haven't done anything with that. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the Go bits. Uh, it was pretty straightforward. The worst bit, um, as might be expected, oh, actually, before we go on, I should say, rules go, um, like a lot of Bazel is actually still really early. Uh, so there isn't support for some things you might expect, like cross-compilation yet. Uh, there is work on that. Uh, there's some edge cases in C and C++ interop. Uh, C Go works, but there's some edge cases there. It doesn't do coverage and doesn't actually do the test parallelization yet. Um, there was work on those things, but it's not there yet. It does actually do the race, condition, race detector, which is nice. Uh, right, so that's the Go bit. It was actually pretty straightforward. The worst bit, as you might expect, was JavaScript. Uh, so actually, even before we get into that, I've had to rename the build file here, build.bazel, so it didn't conflict with Webpack. <laughs> yeah, so there is a couple of kind of basic JavaScript packages for Bazel. Um, there's a TypeScript one, like I said, and a Node one, there's not a Webpack one. So I ended up having to use gen rules here, and it kind of shows you the trade-offs you're making there. So you can depend recursively on a load of files, so you can say, depend recursively on everything in star, 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 source and public, and it'll fill that in for you. Um, you can depend on specific files, so like package JSON and that, and you can depend on other targets, and that'll get filled in with the output files of those. There was a, I mean, right away, one of the bugs I was hitting in general is that the build would work locally, and then I'd build it in a Docker container, and then it'd be like, oh, I can't find Node, where'd it go? because the general was actually using my system one. So in here, we have to depend on the specifically installed uh, one that our node toolchain has given us to get the right version of node and make sure we're there. Um, it's kind of a gotcha with generals is you need to actually make sure you're using stuff in there. Uh, so periodically, if you're running things in a Docker container, that can help you make sure you've actually isolated everything. Um, one different thing than make is you need to actually know the name of your output targets in advance. They need to be kind of statically determined. You can't output like a wildcard thing here. Uh, so in order to do our node modules, we tarred them up and then extract them for this step. There might be a different way around that, uh, but that's kind of how I figured out to do it. And then really, once we have here, we just do npm run build. This is doing a Webpack thing to build our JavaScript. It's not terribly interesting. Um, and then we tar up the output so that we know the output file. We can't say this outputs some directory full of stuff. We need to actually give it a concrete file to deal with. Um, and to make this more repeatable so that we don't get the modification times different every time and then the hash of the outputs is gonna be different, we have to specifically splat the modification time of our files when we're tarring stuff up. That means the hashes of the output will always be the same and we get our repeatability. The stuff for Node modules uh, is actually very similar. It's just a bit simpler. We just depend on the package JSON, do an npm install, and then tar it. Um, it's roughly the same thing. All of this code uh, and the slides will be online after, if you want for reference. 
I think that's it. Cool. Okay, talked about Gazelle, talked about Webpack. So we mentioned a little bit about the target syntax. So unlike make, where your target is always a file that you want to build, because your rules can generate multiple files, we refer to it by the rule name. So we start off specifying a target. So this you do Bazel build. You can add that at specific workspace if it's in a different workspace. Um, and then double slash means root. So wherever your workspace file is, the root of that, and then the directory is to get there and the actual target name. Um, you generally only have one build file per directory, right? Um, you can also build relatively. So if you're in a subdirectory, you can build everything under that subdirectory. It does the triple dot, triple dot thing from Go. Uh, you can also build all of the targets in a uh, directory with the colon star um, for a wildcard in there. So all of this is quite a bit of work uh, and quite a bit of faffing around, frankly, just to get repeatable builds. Um, so is there an easier way? Right. Go build actually itself does a pretty good job of making builds repeatable, um, and particularly the Go ecosystem. The big thing really is vendoring your dependencies. That's kind of where a lot of people go wrong. It doesn't go as far as versioning the Go toolchain. You can do that yourself. Um, and if you're really paranoid or you need to hash the binary or something, you could, you also need to make sure you're not writing timestamps into the binary or using any sort of randomness in the build. If you really want a timestamp, like you're doing a my command line CLI tool dash dash version that outputs, you know, version 5.4 built at 1047 August, whatever, 17th, right? Um, you could use the git commit for that if you need to, or the timestamp of the git commit, which is not as accurate, but is repeatable every time. Uh, and if you're just doing a go build, that would get you most of these benefits, really. Uh, if you don't need the, all of your other languages and stuff in one place, that would be a nice place to start. So trailing off from that, is it worth it? Uh, I think it depends. For really large projects uh, on the scale of Kubernetes, type of size of project, um, possibly. If it's a polyglot project, so you have Webpack, Yarn, maybe you gotta build some protobuf stuff in there, Docker images, that kind of thing. It can be nice to have everything built in one way in the same place. Uh, it can stop having loads of little bash scripts to do all sorts of things in there. Um, in general with Bazel, the whole convention over configuration that Go does is kind of out the window because that doesn't work for other languages like Java or C. Um, so you lose a bit of that niceness that you get from Go. In general, I would say give it a couple of months. It's progressing really, really fastly. Really fastly? Rapidly. Um, I think even before they get to 1.0 stable, um, it'll be really usable and really good, actually. Um, I have to give a giant thank you to my colleague Tom Wilkie. Uh, he helped me out a load in preparing this. Uh, yeah, so big shout out to him. And I wanted to talk a little bit about a project that I've been doing a little bit of work on related to this, uh, which is this. So I mentioned earlier there's not a remote build server that's kind of open source for it. Uh, you can configure Nginx to be a remote cache over REST, but there's not like an open source build box that you can share for Bazel. Uh, if you're interested in that, please get in touch if you want to work on that or you think it's something that you'd mind testing. That would be cool. Uh, yeah, that's what I have for you today. Uh, there's a bunch more reading on it. The first talk there, uh, Building Software at Google Scale by the original architect or builders of Blaze is really, really interesting uh, about how they've done all sorts of crazy stuff to make that work, like implementing their own file system for the outputs so that it wouldn't have to ship it to you until you needed it, uh, stuff like that. Uh, there's also, if you are using Bazel, there's a really good uh, kind of plugin for it, Bazel Watcher, so you can watch your code base, and as you edit stuff, it'll rerun the tests incrementally that only applied to the code you changed, which is really cool, um, or it'll just rebuild the libraries that it needs to. Um, yeah. Do we have, uh, actually, we have time for Q&A. Uh, should do some questions.
So yeah, uh, thanks for a great talk. So um, we've also like been recently migrating to Bazel oh. uh, at our company as well. Hmm. So um, so we had one problem, which is like managing the dependency updates. Okay. So Bazel doesn't provide a currently like a native way to allow you to yeah. just say out of the three two hundred libraries that you depend on, yeah. how do you actually manage actually getting the latest version? Or yeah. so this is where I well, this is one of the reasons I really prefer uh, using vendored dependencies, particularly for Go. So you can use your language-specific uh, dependency tools like dep or gvt or whatever to do your update, uh, and then you rerun Gazelle to rebuild your build files um, versus managing them through the actual Bazel build files, if that makes sense. So that's kind of a benefit you get of using the Go tooling for that. One more? All right. If there's no more, we can watch. Uh, You thought I was kidding. It's an actual thing. I love it. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>